Hi everyone, welcome back to Bible in a Year. My name is Natalie and today we are on day 90. I'm so glad you're here today and I hope everybody's doing great. We are going to be finishing the book of Exodus today. We're going to read Exodus chapter 40, Proverbs chapter 22, Romans chapter 1, but only verses 18 through 32. And then we're going to close out the day with Psalm 62. So um, let's, let's finish up Exodus. Exodus chapter 40. Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, On the first day of the first month, you shall raise up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall put the ark of the covenant in it, and you shall screen the ark with the veil. You shall bring in the table and set in order the things that are on it. You shall bring in the lampstand and light its lamps. You shall set the golden altar for incense before the Ark of the Covenant and put the screen of the door to the tabernacle. You shall set the altar of burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and shall put water therein. You shall set up the court around it and hang up the screen of the gate of the court. You shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it and shall make it holy and all its furniture and it will be holy. You shall anoint the altar of burnt offering with all its vessels and sanctify the altar and the altar will be most holy. You shall anoint the basin and its base and sanctify it. You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tent of meeting and shall wash them with water. You shall put on Aaron the holy garments and you shall anoint him and sanctify him that he may minister to me in the priest's office. You shall bring his sons and put tunics on them. You shall anoint them as you anoint their father, as you anointed their father, that they may minister to me in the priest's office. Their anointing shall be to them for an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Moses did so according to all that Yahweh commanded him. So he did. In the first month in the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was raised up. Moses raised up the tabernacle and laid its sockets and set up its boards and put in its bars and raised up its pillars. He spread the covering over the tent and put the roof of the tabernacle above it as Yahweh commanded Moses. He took and put the covenant into the ark and set the poles on the ark and put the mercy seat above on the ark. He brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the screen and screened the ark of the covenant as Yahweh commanded Moses. He put the, tab uh, he put the table in the tent of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle outside of the veil. He set the bread in order on it before Yahweh as Yahweh commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tent of meeting opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle. He lit the lamps before Yahweh as Yahweh commanded Moses. He put the golden altar in the tent of meeting before the veil and he burned incense of sweet spices on it, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He put up the screen of the door to the tabernacle. He set the altar of burnt offering at the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and offered on it the burnt offering and the meal offering, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar, and put water therein with which to wash. Moses, Aaron, and his sons washed their hands and their feet there. When they went into the tent of meeting, 
And when they came near to the altar, they washed, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He raised up the court around the tabernacle and the altar, and set up the screen of the gate of the court. So Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and Yahweh's glory filled the tabernacle. Moses wasn't able to enter into the tent of meeting because the cloud stayed on it, and Yahweh's glory filled the tabernacle. When the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward throughout all their journeys. But if the cloud wasn't taken up, then they didn't travel until the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of Yahweh was on the tabernacle by day, and there was fire in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Wow, wow, wow. I'm going to miss reading about that. All right, so moving into Proverbs chapter 22. A good name is more desirable than great riches, and loving favor is better than silver and gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. Yahweh is the maker of them all. A prudent man sees danger and hides himself, but the simple pass on and suffer for it. The result of humility and the fear of Yahweh is wealth honor, and life. Thorns and snares are in the path of the wicked. Whoever guards his soul stays from them. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich rule over the poor. The borrower is servant to the lender. He who sows wickedness reaps trouble, and the rod of his fury will be destroyed. He who has a generous eye will be blessed, for he shares his food with the poor. Drive out the mocker, and strife will go out. Yes, quarrels and insults will stop. He who loves purity of heart and speaks gracefully is the king's friend. Yahweh's eyes watch over knowledge, but he frustrates the words of the unfaithful. The sluggard says, There is a lion outside. I will be killed in the streets. The mouth of an adulteress is a deep pit. He who is under Yahweh's wrath will fall into it. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of discipline drives it far from him. Whoever oppresses the poor for his own increase and whoever gives to the rich, both come to poverty. Turn your ear and listen to the words of the wise. Apply your heart to my teaching, for it is a pleasant thing if you keep them within you, if all of them are ready on your lips. I teach you today, even you, so that, you tr- so that your trust may be in Yahweh. Haven't I written to you thirty excellent things of counsel and knowledge, to teach you truth, reliable words, to give sound answers to the ones who sent you? Don't exploit the poor because he is poor, and don't crush the needy in court, for Yahweh will plead their case, and uh, the plunder the life, mm, for Yahweh will plead their case and plunder the life of those who plunder them. Don't befriend a hot-tempered man. Don't associate with one who harbors anger, lest you learn his ways and ensnare your soul. Don't you be one of those who strike hands 
of those who are collateral for debts. If you don't have any means to pay, why should he take away your bed from under you? Don't move the ancient boundary stone which your fathers have set up. Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will serve kings. He won't serve obscure men. Lots of sound wisdom in there. All right. Moving into Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 32, where Paul continues. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known of God is revealed in them, for God revealed it to them. For the invisible things of him since the creation of the world are clearly seen, being perceived through the things that are made, even his everlasting power and divinity, that they may be without excuse. Because knowing God, they didn't glorify him as God, and didn't give thanks, but became vain in their reasoning, and their senseless heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and traded the glory of the in incorruptible God for the likeness of an image of corruptible man and of birds, four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to uncleanliness, that their bodies should be dishonored among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for their women changed the natural function into that which was against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural function of the woman, burned in their lust toward one another, men doing what is inappropriate with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty of their error. Even as they refused to have God in their knowledge, God gave them up to a rep reprobate mind to do those things which are not fitting being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil habits, secret slanderers, backbiters, hateful to God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil things, disobedient to their parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the ordinance of God that those who practice such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So, I do have some thoughts on that, but I think I will withhold the thoughts for now, other than when we get into some of the social, um, the social discord that we find ourselves now in 2023, I would like to continually remind everybody that Jesus is our new covenant. There are still things that God does not want for our lives. We just had a big list of them right there. But Jesus is our new covenant. 
He loves us. And he wants us to love God and love people. So I'm going to stop with that. Uh, Psalm chapter 62. This is for, can you guess? The chief musician. <laughs> uh, to Jeduthun, a psalm by David. My soul rests in God alone. My salvation is from Him. He alone is my rock, my salvation, and my fortress. I will never be greatly shaken. How long will you assault a man? Would all of you throw him down like a leaning wall, like a tottering fence? They fully intend to throw him down from his lofty place. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouths, but they curse inwardly. My soul wait in silence for God alone, for my expectation is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor is with God. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Surely men of low degree are just a breath, and men of high degree are a lie. In the balances, they will go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Don't trust in oppression. Don't become vain in robbery. If riches increase, don't set your heart on them. God has spoken once, twice I have heard this, that the power belongs to God. Also to you, Lord, belongs loving kindness, for you reward every man according to his work. Yes. Yes. I'm so glad you came to see me today. This has been lovely. Day 90. Um, I am not going to lie. I am a little nervous getting into Romans. Um, I have always believed that the Bible is, is living. It is not just a mother goose book of tales. This is history. This, this is just reoccurring um, history. Things don't change. Even what we just read from Paul. It's today. <laughs> Every description is happening today. Um... The reason I stutter with my words is because I don't ever want this channel to be a channel of judgment. This channel is meant to draw closer to God. This channel is not for judgment. It is to draw closer to God. There are going to be a lot of opinions coming in through Romans. I can only imagine. Um, and the reason I'm suspicious is because I've seen it in Bible studies and in church and in the news. So um, I would suggest we just read it. And let's just slow down. Stop staring at our neighbor. Stop staring at a family member. Stop staring at whoever is attached to these descriptions that we just read. Let's look at ourselves. And are we close to the Lord? 
Is our heart tethered to the Lord? Are we showing kindness? Are we showing love? It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. What are we as individuals doing? So I don't mean to end so heavy. Um, I am just a little bit nervous. I, I hope that as a community in Bible in a year, that we really look at ourselves and keep bringing our heart before the Lord our hearts. We're not going to look at everybody else, okay? All right. So with that, have a great day. (laughs) Please come on back tomorrow for uh, day 91. And until then, bye.